Canon very recently released the EOS 90D, which is an update to one of their most popular and like iconic cameras of all time. So today, let's talk about how you can set up the 90D to make your own online content. Let's get to it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So again, today we are going through a quick tutorial slash tips and tricks of the Canon 90D. Now I've been using this for about the last week, week and a half to make a lot of my content. So let's get right to it. This will be more of a video centric feature. I'm not much of a photographer. I just make online content and YouTube videos about making online content and YouTube videos. That's deep. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So let's pop this thing on so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you are a filmmaker, you might not be considering the 90D for a few reasons we'll talk about here in a minute. But first off, we're gonna talk about like how to actually get the camera set up to start doing your videos. So first off, let's go to the resolution and frame rates. Now you're actually kind of limited on the 90D in what frame rates and resolutions you will be able to use, which is why if you're a filmmaker, you're probably avoiding this camera because again, a lot of your option is 29, 9, 7, or 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second in full HD. Uh, the 30 frames per second you can do in 4K, and you can also do 30 frames per second in 1080p, which is the full HD. However, there is no 24 frames per second in this camera, no matter what the resolution, no matter anything, which is kind of disappointing because that's like the 80D had that, and this does not. So you can pick, I like doing 4K and 30 frames per second, so we'll select that. Uh, one of the additional features, and this is one of the tips, is, and this is kind of rare on an APS-C camera. Normally you get full frame cameras that can shoot full frame or crop mode, like an APS-C mode, uh, like the Nikon Z6 that we're using right now. However, this can do both APS-C with no crop and you can crop in a little bit, giving you even more length out of your lenses, which I think is a neat idea. So to do that, you just go down to movie recording quality, 4K cropping enabled. And it, again, that is very useful. So if you have a prime lens, you can get a little more reach. If you have a zoom lens, you can make that be a more of a zoom lens. I really like when cameras give you more features and flexibility like that. You can also access the high frame rate. So this will do 1080p at 120 frames per second. You can do that from this mode too, where you just turn it on and turn it off. You lose a lot of the functionality when using the slow motion. Next up, the most important part of video production period is the audio quality. So if you're coming from a DSLR, you've never really shot video before, I would argue do not leave the camera into the auto sound recording mode. And I know you're gonna wanna let the camera do as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons that I like Canon cameras is they will do a lot of the work for you. However, uh, they don't really have the internal preamps to just let you go in auto. So what you should do is you should go to manual and then you can see I've already, I've already done it here. Um, but you can decide like how powerful the internal preamps on the camera are. Now for a Canon camera or for even the Nikon camera, uh, I don't really trust the internal preamps. So I will turn these down as low as possible. Uh, so there's zero and then one notch up from zero is where you will get the best because your microphone will be doing most of the heavy lifting and not the camera itself. Now, if you do have a microphone that has no gain control, then yes, you'll have to use the internal preamps on the camera. What I would do in that case is go still go to manual, but then do some tests. What you really are looking for, and my general rule of thumb is, you want your peaks, so like your, hey, what's up everybody, I'm super excited to be here. You want your audio peaks to be at about negative 12 decibels. So you'll see the decibels in the negative. If my peaks are around negative 12, that means I'm doing pretty well. Now, I generally, and I don't know if this is the general wisdom, but I prefer under leveling the audio than over leveling the audio. You can always like add some more power to your audio in post. Maybe you'll add a little bit more like actual noise to the process, but that's, I'm okay with that because when it's too hot, you can't recover it at all. And that's basically useless. So I always err on the side of caution, but if you're hitting the negative 12 decibels, you should be perfectly fine and you will get very nice audio. And that's a big benefit um, to the Canon 90D here is as you can see on the lower left hand side there, it does have audio levels that you can see from the flip screen. So when you're using the camera, like you're looking at it, you can monitor your audio without actually having to hear it. And that's where that, you see that green? That green is the 12 decibels, stay around there. Next up, another big benefit of Canon cameras, as opposed to like even Sony cameras, is it has digital image stabilization built into it. And that, what that does is it crops in on the image a little bit, and it uses like an algorithm, it uses some sensors inside of the camera to kind of determine where that stabilization should go. Now you are gonna lose a little bit of the outside if you're using like a wide lens, you're gonna lose some of that lens to it. But I think stable footage is more important than like the widest shot possible. If you want the widest shot possible, use a 
tripod or use a monopod or something like that. But to enable the stabilization, you just go to digital IS and turn, you know, disabled, enabled. Enhanced, they crop in even more, but it, I don't like the enhanced because it adds like this weird wobble thing to it. So I always just go to enable. And then if you're using a lens like this 18 to 135 that has OIS built into it or optical image stabilization, combined together, it works pretty darn well works pretty darn well. Now, one of the really awesome things, and one of the reasons I consider the 90D to be more of a hybrid camera than just a straight up DSLR, is it does have a lot of mirrorless functionality in it. And what I mean by that is this could be a fan fantastic live streaming camera because it's got great battery life. You could use it with a dummy battery. It's got that great autofocus, but here you can even get a clean HDMI out. So like right now, we do not have a clean HDMI out. You can see all the information on the screen and this is what most DSLRs have, but you can turn that off and you can get a clean 4K output. Look at that, now there's nothing. Or you could do a clean 1080p output and you get the same thing where you could use this as a live streaming camera. And to do that, you just like you saw, you go to HDMI info display, you either turn it on, turn it off, uh, or you leave it with info if you're using something like an external monitor, like right, like we're doing right now, and that you want to actually see what the camera is doing. In that case, then leave the info on. And that gives you a lot of extra versatility in the camera, which I very much appreciate. One of my biggest frustrations with the Z6 that we're recording right now is it does do a clean out, but it doesn't give me the info if I want it. So like right now, I kind of have to use my Atomos Shinobi. It's a monitor. I can't see what the autofocus points are. I can't see like the settings. So that's kind of frustrating where I really like how this does both. So if you are using a monitor, if you're a little bit farther away from the camera and you can't use the flip screen, um, it gives you more options. I always, I love having more options. Something else, and one of the cons of the 90D is it doesn't have any of the log profiles. It doesn't have Canon log. It doesn't have Canon wide dynamic range, which for a camera that costs this much is kind of disappointing. Even like the Sony a6300, even the Sony a6400, which costs less than this, but the a6400 has the HLG profiles. It has S log. It has the ability to like flatten the image to get more dynamic range, whereas the 90D, does not have any of those. However, you can install third party picture profiles that give you a little bit flatter image. Now it won't necessarily give you more dynamic range, but it will let you more easily match your footage and posts. And the one that I've been using is the free Technicolor Cinestyle profile. Now you'll see all sorts of people out there that have like paid C-Log profiles. I don't necessarily recommend those because this one is free and it basically does the same thing. So you can install those and then you can go over to picture style and so my picture style user defined number three is CineStyle. And what that does is, again, it flattens. You see how gray the image looks now? Like, look. So now that is super gray, it's really flat. On other cameras, when you do stuff like use a log profile, it will then give you the ability to pull a little bit more dynamic range out of the sensor. Whereas since this is like unofficial and it's not Canon log, it's not gonna increase your dynamic range, but it will let you make, it'll make matching just so much easier. So I highly recommend installing one of these profiles. You don't necessarily have to use it, but if you do want to change around the picture profiles, which is a big deal in cameras these days, uh, you do that by going over to option number three, picture style. And you can see I've kind of tweaked these around so you can use these and then tweak these how you want. My preferred picture profile and the one that I've been using is the neutral one. And I turn that down so you can see uh, info. So you can see, you can also change like the settings inside of it. So like sharpness, contrast, saturation, all that stuff. Now what I do, and I probably am a little too aggressive on this, is you can turn the sharpness down. But what I do is that when I find like these cameras like this, the Z6 is the same way, Sony cameras, most standard picture profiles are a little too contrasty, which means like the difference, but it's such a stark difference between shadow and highlight. So I like turning that down a little bit. It makes the image just look more pleasing to me without sacrificing like the colors or the saturation or anything like that and I use the neutral because it adds in that a little bit but you can use like portrait standard auto all of those things but picture profiles are a very big part of camera ecosystems and it really helps when you use that when you're making videos now something I do want to talk about is autofocus because this also has the eye detect autofocus but it's not turned on standard when you originally get the camera now there are firmware updates coming to make this even better uh, but to turn this on you just go to eye detect autofocus and enable it. Now again, it will come disabled naturally. So you get that and then you'll get that box around the eye. It's more for like stills work than it is for like video work. Uh, I find that face detect autofocus works perfectly fine. Like the Z6 right now is recording in face detect autofocus. And that's, I mean, that's good enough. It's more about stills that want that eye, but why wouldn't you enable the best autofocusing system you can have, right? I always do because 
it costs you nothing. You can leave the uh, the servo AF on, which is your your continuous autofocus. You can pick between what autofocus you do. Now, one of the things about Canon cameras, which is kind of frustrating to me, is as you just saw, we have it on face tracking. But if you leave it on face tracking, you can't see the levels. So you can see the histogram. We're cycling through the info display. But you gotta turn off here, let me show you. And we're gonna get to this quick menu here in a second because I love this quick menu. Well, apparently you can't see it when it's plugged into HDMI, but when it's unplugged here, can you see it? When you unplug it from HDMI, you have to keep it, like if you want the automatic level, you have, like if you want the automatic level to show up so you can actually see if it's stable or not, you have to unplug it from HDMI and you can't have face tracking autofocus on, which is a huge pain in the butt. And it's not just this, it's all Canon cameras that I've used like between this, the EOS R, stuff like that. That's just frustrating. It adds more hassle when if I want to make sure that the camera is level, I have to turn off the autofocus, level it, turn the autofocus back on. Kind of frustrating when you could just do it all the time. Imagine that. So the last thing I really want to talk about is the quick menu right here. Now, I really like quick menus, um, but Canon's is really, really good. And the way you use this is you just hit the Q on the back of the camera and it gives you all of your options. So you can go to 4K crop like we were already in. You can see that you're in 4K crop. If you want to turn that crop off, remember, you go. And you normally can do this through touchscreen, but since we're hooked up to HDMI, we cannot. Um, let's disable the crop and you can use the joystick on the back. So I don't like this little, uh, I don't like this little dial thing on the back. It reminds me of the Panasonic S1, which I did not like, but it has, unlike the ADD, it has a joystick that you can go back and forth through. So you can cycle through this quick menu while it's out in front of you, which is the most important part. Um, you can change your settings while in front of the camera, which is such, all cameras need to have this, but it gives you the options to change your resolution, your frame rate, it gives you the stabilization, it gives you the audio recording levels, it gives you the headphone recording levels if you wanna use a headphone. You can change your white balance, your picture style, your lighting optimizer. I never use these bottom three things, but you use the quick menu to do all of the things that we already talked about even faster. But the reason I showed you those things up front is it's always more important to me to know like how the camera works under the scenes than it is to necessarily know how to cheese the system. And one of the last quick things we're gonna talk about is since this is a DSLR, it's got a mirror, did you hear that? You have to go between live view, you have to raise up the mirror to use this as a camera. So one of the things it's gonna say is when you originally turn this thing on and you put it into movie mode, you're gonna have to hit the start stop button and that will bring the mirror up. But yeah, what are some of your tips and tricks or what are some of the things that you are curious about with the 90D, with Canon's other cameras? Leave a comment below. I like doing these little videos because unlike like my impressions video or me talking more specifically about the camera, this is a way that I can use to get my knowledge about the camera and what I've been using with for the last X amount of time over to you guys. So let me know what are some features or some things that you would like to know about this camera or about any cameras in general. Thanks for watching.